Hello and welcome to Capital Ideas TV. I'm Mark Bunting. Walk through the streets of any Canadian city and you're sure to see plenty of these in people's hands. Vape pens have exploded in popularity since legal cannabis arrived. And that speaks to a broader trend unfolding. Cannabis concentrates and edibles are quickly becoming the go-to for consumers everywhere. And the data makes that clear. Extracts accounted for nearly 40% of cannabis sales as of 2017. And they've only gained market share since then. In 2014, they made up less than 25%. Concentrates are seeing particularly strong pickup on the medical side of the industry, where patients value controlled dosage first and foremost. It's not a stretch to think extracts could make up more than half of sales within the next couple of years. There's been a surge in cannabis processing power in response to this demand shift. Some of the largest players in the space have big plans to ramp up their capacity over the next few years. Processing capacity in Canada sits at around half a million kilograms per year, but could nearly double in short order. Heritage Cannabis is one of the upstarts ready to roll up its sleeves and get to work. Its bold vision is to become one of the largest producers of high quality extracts in the country, and it's well on its way to doing that. Heritage Cannabis recently secured licenses for two production and extraction facilities and has its sights fixed on the coming edibles market as well. CEO Clint Sharples says the foundation is in place to build an extracts empire with a presence from sea to sail. So Clint Heritage Cannabis is the umbrella company for four distinct subsidiaries uh, and Pure Farm is at the heart of that. So uh, what kind of, uh, and this is an extraction division, so what kind of uh, capacity are we talking about potentially and, and where would that rank you among other uh, cannabis companies that are in the same area? Sure, so yeah, we have the four subsidiaries with the two licensed producers. Uh, we acquired Pure Pharma back in December of 2018 and, and they do their work inside the two uh, licensed producers now. So Pure Pharma has expanded to be under our uh, Voyage out in British Columbia and our Canicure out in Ontario and is doing the extraction work uh, within those two LPs. We have currently in operation two Vitalis Q90s out in BC, two in Ontario, with two arriving next week uh, here in early June, which will be on stream in July. Uh, that puts us at or near the top of the extraction capacity of any company in Canada. Uh, however, in understanding the end use and the end product of the oil quality you're aiming for, the higher the quality oil, the longer it takes to make. And that, what that would do is reduce the amount of capacity that you can put ultimately through one of these machines. Uh, however, uh, we're not big on skipping on the quality that we do on the, uh, on the end uh, product. So we take our time to make sure we do it right. Now you've said yourself that uh, it's easy to talk about uh, extraction, but to do it, you need expertise, and it, it's a tricky thing to do. Not any company can do it. So, so how, how do you, uh, how does Heritage Cannabis differentiate itself, and where is the competitive edge in the extraction field for you? Uh, yeah, that's a that's a true statement, and and one that I got to admit, a couple of years ago, I was caught on. Uh, we talked about extraction, saying, sure, we're going to get into this. How hard is it? Put some put some cannabis in one side of the machine and the other side out pours oil. Um, I was quite surprised when I actually learned the details and, and the, the uh, uh, operators of Pure Pharma took me through an extraction process and one that's done properly, not, uh, not the one that just about any hack can do. Uh, there's a, an art to the science. Uh, they have a very specific process in which this is to go through, uh, no different from the high quality oil I was talking about earlier. In order to get there, uh, many different things need to take place and they need to take place with a skilled operator, with someone who really understands what they're doing. Uh, quite fortunately for us, we have a lot of them and they're trained and uh, this has been a large benefit for us as uh, coming through. And you're currently making your way through what will be something like $40 million worth of oils from hemp. So where are we uh, in that process? Uh, yeah, so that's the ultimate goal is to produce, uh, um, approximately, the idea would be approximately, depending on the market valuation, uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of $40 million worth of inventory once we can get through our, our hemp biomass uh, uh, input product. 
Um, there are other business aspects that we're looking at right now too with the coming of uh, the Cannabis 2.0, in particular the uh, right new regulations surrounding the vape pens. We believe there will be a massive market for that and we also believe that our oil will be in huge demand because of our direct-to-vape technology that they have within Pure Pharma that takes the process cannabis input to oil output that could go directly into a vape cartridge. So that will also participate into how, how quickly we can get through our, our hemp biomass. But CBD inventory is definitely something we're looking at. Now, from an overall standpoint, what's your strategy with that inventory uh, in terms of wholesaling it and, and uh, white labeling it? Uh, so it, it's, there'll be a threefold to it. We, we sell in bulk. We'll be selling CBD oil in bulk to uh, other LPs. Uh, which they will use for whatever products they, they wish to uh, market to the, uh, to the world. Um, we will do white label product. Uh, we'll, we'll produce uh, uh, CBD tinctures for other LPs that uh, they can put their own labels and brands on. It'll be our oil and our internal products, but uh, something that, uh, that other LPs look and see the quality and they want that. And then also finally for ourselves. Uh, when we're doing our own medical sales and we're selling to our own patients, uh, via our medical division, that's also something that we want to uh, be able to produce. Produce our own oils for our own products for our own formulations. Clint, off the top, you talked about uh, the licensed producers uh, that you uh, have uh, under the um, Heritage Cannabis umbrella. Let's focus there and start with Canacure, which sounds like uh, potentially, I mean, already uh, a going concern, but potentially uh, quite an operation. For sure. Yeah, well, we acquired Canacure in November of 2018. Um, and very specifically was for the growth potential and the optionality that their facility allowed for everything that we're looking at for the future. Uh, Canicure's facility is 122,000 square feet of indoor, of which 24,000 is built out currently for grow rooms. What this allows us to do, when we were planning our extraction expansion, uh, we knew that we could utilize the approximately other 100,000 square feet for two purposes. One was expanding our extraction facility. Uh, we'll be doing an approximate 25,000 square foot expansion for extraction, which if you, if you look at how much room an extraction machine takes up, it allows you to do a lot of extraction machines and the downstream processing that comes along with it. The winterization, the bottling, the, uh, the vape cartridge filling, the capping of vape cartridges, all the packaging that goes along with it. But what that also allows us to do with the other approximately 70,000 square feet that we have available to us is to give this building uh, the flexibility and optionality for anything that happens in Cannabis 2.0. Uh, edibles, infusions, topicals, uh, gel capsules, just about anything that's going to come along with whatever the public decides is the way that they want to consume cannabis, we will be able to produce as a manufacturer in joint ventures with others. Now a big part of uh, the company's focus, your company's focus, is on the consumer and to that end you recently struck a deal uh, took a 30% stake in a company called Endocana, which has this DNA test for cannabis users. So um, what is that exactly and how important is it for, for the company? Uh, so yeah, we're, we're really excited about that. Uh, and, and when I looked at that and uh, was working with the, uh, the people within our, our medical services division, the idea was to try and empower people or give people uh, a, a, an ability to participate in their choices for cannabis as, as they're using it for their health. Uh, there's a high level of frustration of people saying, I got a prescription from my doctor for cannabis, now what? How do I go and find the product that's right for me? We ran across the people from Endocana uh, and their Endo DNA kit uh, almost a year ago and uh, conversations have been had and we've watched how they develop their product and the way we look at that, it it allows people to, via a scientific method, uh, get DNA evidence which directly allows them, the patient, to understand which cannabinoid works best for them in their genetic makeup. That then allows them to take that information, overlay it with the products that they're looking for, and can tell whether or not the various cannabinoids, which have been deemed to be the most effective for them, can be found in the products that they're looking for to 
assist with whatever ailments they have. It's more information than most people have right now when they go to find products. It's, uh, I, I believe it'll be a game changer. Let's talk some numbers. Uh, you have a revenue, an annualized revenue run rate um, in mind. So, so, so uh, uh, what is that exactly? Uh, this Cannabis 2.0 is delivering a huge potential market out there, and we are gearing up for that. We have our own CBD, and we're producing our own oils, and that's, uh, that's something that we can reasonably predict right now. But as we grow, we're targeting that by the end of 2019, uh, we want to be somewhere in the range of an annualized number. Now, this is not for the calendar, mm -hmm. annualized, somewhere between 35 to $50 million in revenues by that time. And then uh, when do you expect profitability? Uh, we believe we'll be on a run rate for profitability at that time too. Great. All right, so uh, in a broad sense, and I often ask this of CEOs of cannabis companies, as you know, investors have so many companies to, to choose from. So, and, and a lot of them maybe appear the same. You obviously don't think that about your company, Heritage Cannabis. So, so convince investors that, that Heritage Cannabis is a company that, that they need to look at seriously. So what we're trying to do in Heritage, and I shouldn't even say we're trying to, we are exactly laser focused on doing this, is ensuring that the products that we put out, starting from the strains that we grow, we're not doing the generic strains that you'll see everywhere out there. These are very specific hand-selected strains which are being requested from our medical sales division for, for their formulations, plus what we've seen on the vaping side, the vape pen side, being the most popular in the United States and uh, previously in the gray market in Canada, and making sure that we can deliver these products specifically for what we know people want. Uh, we already know we can produce uh, amongst the highest quality of extracted oils in this world. I'll put the Pure Pharma guys and their quality up against anybody. What we'll do is we'll grow the strains, we'll extract the oils, and we'll produce the products that we believe will be of the highest quality and the most effective for people, and giving them the ability to be an active part if you're a medical patient, of uh, working with doctors, or being it on your own if you have the knowledge in order to take the information forward to utilize our products, or for that matter, others.